Okay, here's the video everyone's been asking for and everyone's been waiting for, how to tune your filters. I'm gonna show you quick and dirty what I do to tune our filters, what I do to decide what to use for our filters, and also maybe a little bit of tuning the quad in general. I'm gonna go also over the different PID types and explain exactly what they are and how they're different and how you wanna tune them. Uh, I'm gonna use this configurator here to show you exactly what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, please like and comment, and I will try and respond to the comments. You can also always hit me up directly or, or jump on our Discord or use our Facebook group, whatever. Uh, so here you go. I have the configurator open. Now, this is a, a board I flashed uh, recently, and I haven't actually set this one up yet, so you can see there's no tune selected. The very first thing I do when I get any quad is I click on the default tune button. Uh, once I do this, you can see it sets the PIDs and it also sets the filtering to some defaults. And once I do this, I also go in here and choose my rates. Uh, if I'm racing, I like to use the Captain Vanover rates. They're slow enough that I can, you know, really don't miss uh, like my movements. I won't accidentally make it, you know, jerk over uh, like you could on a freestyle rates. Basically, the lower the rates, the easier it is going to be to race because if you're nervous, your hands are shaking. It's not going to pick up on that shaking as much. And we all get in that stressful situation, even if we don't care about racing, where we're trying to do something and, and our hands shake a little bit, or we might, you know, jerk. Uh, once it does this, it sets the filters. And the first thing I would do is I would go out and fly this quad. Um, I would see what it's like, uh, basically, if it feels tight or not. And I would listen for a chirping. Uh, the chirping kind of sounds like, which is the P usually being too high or it needing some filtering. Um, before I even mess with the filters, I'm gonna try two more tunes and see if that uh, cleans it up. The other tune what I like is the low power tune and the high power tune. Um, we call them that because the high power tune works usually better for higher power to weight ratio quads. Um, and the low power tune works better for higher heavier quads so like a freestyle quad with a gopro the low power tune might work better and if you pick this you can see it increases the pids um basically the higher the pids for the heavier the quad or the the lower power to weight uh the filters again stay the same because in general for most quads these filters just work um there are noisier bids or, or noisier builds that will want to change the filters, but uh, in most cases, this is what you want to leave them set to. So if you, I would go fly this, and again, I would listen for the chirp. And um, if I still have a chirp, that means maybe, hey, my quad is super powerful, and I would try the high power tune. So I'm gonna find one of these three that work the best. Whichever one works the best, I'm gonna use. From this point forward, I'm probably not even gonna to touch the PIDs, although maybe some for some fine tuning I might do that. Uh, but in general, I'd never need to. Uh, one of these three tunes has worked on just about every quad I've ever tried, um, but there's some other tunes in there too if you wanna to try them as well. The next thing I do is I like to turn off uh, signal smoothing. Uh, basically what this does, uh, I think actually one is turned off, uh, but this basically does is smooth your sticks. So if your sticks are jerky, you know, you don't have smooth movements, it tries to smooth that out. Uh, we can do some of the smoothing with some filters even as well. And in general, I, I don't like it enabled. Some people like it, so we have it in there. Um, you know, maybe beginners who want to do that smooth footage might put it in there. Or maybe, you know, some of our freestyle guys like it for smoothing out their footage as well. Uh, for racing, on most part, uh, you want this as low as possible because racing, you want the least latency possible because you're doing very quick reactions. So the next thing I would do is if I still hear that chirp on my quads, no matter what, what one I've used, I still seem to have noise or the motor sound noisy, I would lower these cutoffs. Um, the 200, basically what that means is the higher the number, the less the filtering. So I'm gonna repeat that again. The higher the number, the less it filters. So the way this works is it has two stages because one filter only reduces the noise a certain amount of decibels. So we can compound filters to reduce the noise in different frequency ranges. Um, th so that's the way this works. Now you gotta keep in mind that in flight one, we run at 32 kilohertz with an unfiltered gyro. So there's no hidden filters like there is in beta flight. Um, usually beta flight has a hidden filter from gyro averaging or low pass filter that's running on the gyro itself. Uh, when you're on eight kilohertz, you have automatic filtering. There is absolutely no way to turn that off. 
The only way to turn that off is to run the gyro in the mode we run it in at 32 kilohertz. Uh, I, from what I understand, talking to Mark Spatz, um, you can turn on experimental uh, 32 kilohertz on Betaflight to get the same raw gyro readings we want. The reason we want those raw gyro readings is because it lets us control all the filtering. And I'm going to show you some filters where this is really required because they're not really filters. But going back, I have some noisy motors. Uh, I usually like to try something like, you know, 180 on the first stage, which maybe cuts a little bit extra noise on the top end. And then I like to go to 70 on the bottom stage. This is the most I've ever really had to adjust the filters for a really noisy build. Um, and it's, it's something that you may want to try uh, if you have a noisy build. Now, these are all using traditional filters so far. Um, and so usually I, I mess with this stuff until I get a good flying quad. For racing, this is probably the way to go. Uh, but we have a little secret. We have a filter for freestyle that needs no work whatsoever. So if I'm going to do a freestyle quad, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the second stage. Um, and I'm going to enable the predictive filter. Now the predictive filter is amazing because it's not really a low pass filter. It takes an estimate it tries to decide what it thinks the filter reading should be it takes the filter reading itself and it weights the two and decides what it what the filter reading is by doing this there's no tuning needed there's no cutoffs there's no frequencies there's no work it either works or it doesn't if your build is extremely noisy it may not work uh but on the most part just about every clean build i've ever seen the predictive filter works amazing and it gives you a slightly different feel I wouldn't describe it as more latent, but it kind of likes to go the direction it wants to go. So for racing, you might not like this as much because, because it's estimating where the gyro should be. Uh, if you're going, if the quad's going one direction and you're constantly flipping back and forth between directions, it slows down those transitions uh, because you know it, you have to convince it that it wants to go a different direction. Uh, that's why the filtering works so well because it doesn't let it go away from where it thinks it should be. So by putting this predictive filter on, go fly it. If it flies well, great, you found your thing. If it doesn't fly well, you might want to just go and pick the high power tune if you already haven't. Oh, oh excuse me, the low power tune. Yeah, no, the high power tune if you already haven't. I said that right because that will lower your PIDs. Um, as you can see, the low power tune, much, high, much higher PIDs than the high power tune. And that might be the reason that you're seeing some noise because... Uh, the, the sounds you're hearing come from one of two things. They come from too much noise or they come from high P. Now, when you have too much noise, P reacts, and that's actually what you're hearing. Uh, so they're both actually high P, but you can fix it by either lowering P or you can fix it by increasing the filtering. You usually don't want to do both. You want to do one or the other. It's usually better to get the filtering right and, and leave P alone because that gives you a snappier stick feel, uh, but you can mess with those if you want. Once I've gotten this quad all locked in, um, I then want to eliminate all the prop wash I can, and this is a little tip that Mark Spatz told us, and, and it does work amazing, um, is I enable two bi-quad filters. I put these both at 200, and your quad should fly amazing. You may, if you, if you have problems with this, you may want to go back and adjust the main filtering, because if the main filtering is off, then this isn't going to work as well. Uh, you might also only want to try only one bi-quad filter, but on all my quads, the dual by quad filters to 200, once I've had them tuned the other way, flies amazing. I literally cannot find prop wash no matter what I do, no matter what move I go into. Split S into my own prop wash, it literally shutters for a fraction of a second. And that's the only shuttering I ever get in the quad. And with a little tweaking of the pids and stuff, I can even get rid of that. So this is an amazing tip and I, and I recommend you doing that. Um, so that's it. That's that's how simple it is to tune a flight one quad um, It's just a matter of choosing between a couple of the tunes getting it locked in and then adjusting your filters accordingly Now I told you I was going to tell you about the different PID uh, Modes, so basically we have this new thing called sim mode, which everyone is excited about it gives you more confidence It lets you fly faster lets you take turns sharper um, it, and it's even seen people like Min Chan to gain three seconds a lap by using it. It's great for freestyle or not, um, I, cause it's just a more direct feel. Some people don't want the direct feel maybe on freestyle. So we leave the old legacy pit controller in there, but in general, just about everyone I've ever had use sim mode, love sim mode. We also have something called whisper mode. 
And what whisper mode does, and the reason we call it whisper mode, is because it decouples the axes, which what that basically means is you have your roll, pitch, and yaw. And when something happens on roll, it impacts traditionally pitch and yaw. And when something happens on yaw, it impacts roll. And so um, anything you do not only impacts each other, but also adds noise to those other uh, axes as well. So what we've realized is by redoing the way this controller works, this motion controller works, uh, we can eliminate some of that noise and some of that uh, interaction. So what that means is your movements are going to be cleaner. When you tell it to roll, it's only going to roll. Uh, at least, and it, it shouldn't add in pit, you know, yaw or pitch when it's doing that. And not only that, but because we have less noise, what I've realized is by choosing Whisper, I can go way higher on these cutoffs. Like I can do 300, 150 on my quad now once Whisper mode is enabled. And it flies amazing. Um, this is something probably more for freestyle and it's something we're going to need to spend more time tuning because the pids are slightly off, but usually I like to run whisper and sim mode with higher cutoffs on a freestyle quad. Uh, now keep in mind, this is going to be a little more sensitive. And like I said, the pids could be slightly off and that's why the default tunes aren't using it right now because it's going to take a little work to get it perfect. Um, but I highly recommend you check it out because it is something amazing and it's, doing something that um, I never thought would be possible and, and something I didn't even realize noise was coming from. Uh, the last things I want to show you are these limit settings. On the most part, you don't need to play with these. Um, and I'm going to explain what they do. Uh, the main one you might want to adjust is the CG adjustment. Basically, if your P is set right and you're throttling up and down and your nose is bobbing up or bobbing down, you can lower this, usually anywhere between 90 and 110. Uh, can control that. Um, the, what, what this does is it actually reduces power to uh, two of the motors uh, when it's doing movements. So um, it's not adding the same amount of power in the front motors as it does the rear motors or vice versa to help that nose up under quick throttle movements. Um, also, your P could be low if that's happening, so keep that in mind. The next thing is KD limit. Um, in my opinion, you never need to touch this. In fact, it's something I probably want to remove at some point. Um, but we leave it at 99, which basically doesn't limit the KD. Usually if your KD is uh, too high or you have too much noise, reducing this might help, but really you should be changing your D rather than even messing with this limit. So it's it's something that's in there. It was put in there kind of as a hack, I think, in the past, and I, it really shouldn't be needed, but for now we left it in there. Uh, KI limit does basically the same thing. Um, it limits the amount of eye that can act. Uh, it basically, it limits it to 40% of the overall PIDs. Uh, with our new sim mode, eye doesn't really act much, um, so this doesn't matter as much either, but as a, as a rule of thumb, just leave it alone. The other thing, things are dead band. Um, on Tyrannus, the, the sticks uh, we've noticed don't necessarily center as much as well as they do on Spectrum, for example. Um, so you might want to increase this dead band if you notice uh, you're getting micro movements from your sticks. Um, uh, I don't know if Spectrum has something special in their radios that automatically do this. It's a good possibility. Um, but we've noticed maybe with, with Tyrannus, it's more likely that you need to adjust this. But just in general, if you want to give that little bit of dead band in the middle, you can slowly increase this. Uh, it looks like it's set to 1% right now. So that means that in 1% of your sticks won't be registered. So as you increase this number, it makes the, the center sticks not register to move the sticks more. So if you notice, like uh, when you're throttling up even, you notice you're yawing, you can even increase this to get rid of that. Uh, so that's that's it. So basically, it, it, you know, it could be as easy as this to tune a quad. You can know you have a freestyle quad. You did this nice, clean build. Uh, you go in there and you pick a low power tune, which is going to give you some high pids. Then I want to go down here and um, change these by quads to 200. Uh, and on most freestyle builds, it's as easy as that. And you're flying really well. And then from there, maybe I want to... Uh, from there, maybe I want to change, try out the whisper mode as well, and maybe increase the, the frequencies. I can also go in here, if it's freestyle, turn this predictive filter, turn the second stage off, just run the predictive filter only, which is just, in my mind, insanely amazing that, you know, Betaflight and other firmwares have all these crazy filterings, and we just have this one filter and running on raw gyro data, and it, and it works so well. Um, everything in here is easily adjustable, and if you have any questions, or uh, want to know more details, please let me know. Uh, just like and comment, please. And, uh, you know, hit me up on Facebook or ask in the groups as well. And, 
And we're all here to help you and get you flying well. And uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.